So this chart, the different lines, covered lines, show you participation rates on the different waves. Sometimes that's the, because of the marketing campaign where we're focusing on different um, types of firms. But um, the dotted line is obviously the number of firms. I sometimes think I should have done that as a logarithmic scale. It would have been interesting. Okay. Um, results today, financial data contributing. What's fascinating to me is we actually were able to get 80% of firms giving us their confidential financial data. And people said, you'll never get this. We got it by some innovation, which we came up in some of our work groups within the team of uh, Reload Consulting, us and Didi, saying, how do we do this? Psychologically, we get people to enter their revenue or profitability as a band. Then we go into a screen that says, you've given us a band, we can give you a much better benchmark report if you give us a more precise value. So you can give us explicit value or a slider. The slider, you may not be able to see that little green thing to the left. This gets around the psychological and sometimes the board directions do not give your revenue. They're not. They're giving us an indication where the revenue is. It is purpose, purposely vague. But it's brilliant for us because it breaks down those bands into something much, much more accurate. And uh, it's allowed us, as I said, to get 80% financial data. Even more importantly is when we feed back the benchmark reports, we give those who gave us banded data analysis on the basis of bands, those who gave us explicit analysis, much, much better quality on uh, explicit data. Okay, we've also produced for Lindy's team a whole number of baseline and tracking reports um, of industry sizes and such like. It's, they're not perfect. We're improving them as we go through and we've got a whole program now that we've got the, the new generation of software for the services coming through on industrialising those processes. But we've learnt a few lessons in the last three years. Um, contributors are motivated through a combination of self-interest and to a lesser extent by the benefits to their industry body or their industry as a whole. The interaction between contributors and benchmarker must be on the basis of informed consent. They must know what it is they're doing, what they'll get from it, and what other people are getting from it as well. Uh, to keep that ecosystem, you, you have to stop free riding, you have to give rewards, and also cautions or, or you know, disincentives for, for trying to free ride it. Uh, one example of that is new investors, uh, sorry, new contributors who want to come on board late are free riding or late riding in my parlance. So that you can't actually give them five years of history because they've only really come in for the last year. So you, you, you actually have to tailor the reporting to them. Um, and we always want to upsell contributors to higher quality additional data points, whatever else, to get them in there. Okay. Key findings before I hand over to Lou. Um, the concept works. The industry values it. They want to contribute. They will if we meet their requirements and give them benefits. It's worthwhile to, to government. It's worthwhile to us as research to do it, although we haven't had the time to mine, make the most of that. And it's certainly, from the business point of view, worthwhile to them. The recruitment and participation is absolutely key. If we don't do that, you don't get participation rates, you don't get quality data. Um, we've also learnt that the strategy and the infrastructure that we've established to, to gather it, to manage it, can be applied to other marketplaces and to other types of surveys. And we took the decision, DD, Reload, CCI, a year ago, to invest in Benchmarker further, and we've been doing that very busily with the help of Reload for over a year now. So the first public unveiling of Benchmarker Mark II. Hand over to you, Lou. Thank you. How are you going? Um, I'm just going to try and uh, work this as well. Bear with me one sec. Um, 
There we go. So a little bit about us. We're, we're not uh, researchers. Uh, we're not the government. We're a, um, a private, privately held company, 40 staff internationally. Um, and I'm the MD of the company. Uh, we're, we're business consultants and web strategists. We also do a lot of programming and that sort of thing. But we're not web developers. We, I suppose we're um, digital, digital consultants and, and, and digital strategists for the creative age. Um, what we've done effectively, I think about 2006, Peter came to my office of my old company, which was a web design company, and said, I've got this idea about this benchmarker thing. It wasn't, I don't think, even called benchmarker back then. Um, and basically that only really started to mature when Didi got on board in, in 2007, 2008, and we started having a lot of coffees down at uh, Margaret Street <coughs> and um, started to really thrash out how this thing's going to look and how it's going to work. A lot of the, uh, the initial barriers were about the, um, the, the businesses putting in financial data and, and that was a, a major thing that we had to overcome and um, there needed to be a lot of uh, strategy around that and Peter has just alluded to how relationships have been built by both uh, all three parties really but mainly by Didi and, and the CCI to really get businesses to relax uh, when they're putting in sensitive data about profit and loss. Uh, and it's the, the big brother adage. We didn't want to create this thing to be a big brother. Um, we wanted to create it to be uh, something that was actually going to be a, a 360 degree uh, process of giving back to the, the business community. So uh, the benefits that we see, so what I'm going to do is give a quick presentation. I've got about 12, 13 minutes. So I'll go through the benefits that we see from a business. We're, we're an SME, as I said, um, and how we see it being applied. And, and anybody out there who's, who's a business, uh, from a business uh, mindset or uh, you know, owns a business and things like that, that's where we're approaching it from. So we see that basically it's providing up-to-date information uh, at an industry level um, to things like the cabinet. Um, it, it, it's very important that basically it goes uh, all the way up and that data is statistically viable as well. A better understanding of actually how the industries are performing, um, a bit of a pulse, if you like, about uh, a pulse in policy development on the fly and, and basically sort of saying, look, this is something that we can uh, develop some policy up, this is what's actually happening at the moment. Um, and we're very reactive to be able to, um, to get out there and, and say that this, this data that we're doing, uh, this is what the, uh, the guys are doing in the industry segments. We, can, uh, we have to be flexible. In anything we do these days in, in, in our game, we have to be very flexible and, and there's terms like widgets and customization and personalization and profiling and all those sort of web 2.0 things that we throw out there. But this is probably the tool that needs to be as flexible as possible because the, the tool uh, is surveying at the moment the creative industries. And the creative industries like to think themselves, as, you, as you'd be aware, <coughs> as very dynamic and um, uh, people that uh, know how to adapt and change. So we have to be literally changing this thing all the time to make sure that it's actually a, um, uh, a dynamic piece of kit that actually uh, can, can foster innovation for these guys. Um, we have to provide a practical tool. There's no point having all these wonderful things that you put into a, a tool like this. Uh, it still has to be a benchmarking tool. It still has to have uh, good quality data and it still has to be relevant to the, uh, the businesses using it. So the benefits to business, uh, it's something that they can compare with, with their peers on, on their performance. And, and that line before is probably one of the core lines on that graph that you saw at the end. How am I performing? Am I above the line or below the line? And, and, and people often talk about that uh, as a term. I'm, I'm performing better than my peers. I can't relax. I've got to keep going. But uh, this tool is actually just vindicating the fact that, uh, yes, I've been doing pretty well as a business for the last little while, but I've got some room to, to grow. Or if I'm below the line, I need to really get a, a crack on. It's about competitive advantage. Where does my competitive advantage lie within the, um, the creative industries and, and where's my weaknesses? So what it's doing is not a full SWOT analysis, which is internal and external threats, but what it's actually basically doing is sort of giving them a pulse about how they're going at the moment. It's, it's a means of improvement, uh, and, and improvement to us is about innovation, and, and, and to us what it means is uh, f providing a full 360 degree feedback loop uh, using government uh, tools and resources. So for example, when we produce benchmark reports now, or, or sorry, interim reports on, on how they're going with their data, we'll provide links there to uh, Queensland Government export opportunities or Queensland Government small business job assist programs uh, and the like, actually closing off that loop and saying, you might have a little bit of a revenue problem here, but here's a program that you might want to apply for and they're going to give you 50 grand to, to do it. So it's actually sort of in inviting and fostering the, the application of grants and things like that. It's about prompting them to think about it. Often small business, you know, and I'm talking that sort of micro business right up to even, you know, 50 million a year sort of thing, they, they 
might have a CFO in there, in, in, in there, but generally speaking, most of them will get in touch with their accountant and spend a thousand dollars every year to do their tax, and that's about it. That's all they really think about. And am I, am I less or more, or am I, am I growing this year? I'm one percent up. That's you know, a lot of businesses are too busy at the coalface doing the production, doing the creative industries piece. They don't have time to stop and think. Suddenly, an email comes in, generally developed by uh, Grant over there, and basically what happens is it sort of says, prompts them to say, you need to get in there. Just give us a little bit of. Uh, information and we can use all the other information you gave us in the last three or four years and we're going to give you a, a very robust report to see how your pulse is going. And that's a very uh, advantageous thing for, for, for business. So the, basically the way the system process, process works, and I knew I wouldn't be able to fit this on one slide, so I just did a couple of overviews. It's basically an information flow. Uh, it's about inputs. It's, um, there is a survey module, but we don't like to call it a survey module, but I put it up there as a survey module. Um, there's a response engine that spits out um, interim reports and then more dynamic reports. Uh, and then there's industry, high-level industry reports that get generated uh, using very, you know, very high-level statistical tools. It has to be easy as well. Um, it provides immediate feedback, and I want to show you those slides in a sec about immediate feedback for the, um, the actual performance that they're doing. Right, here's some success factors that we see. Um, it's, it's about the survey completion rates uh, and, and, and lowering that dropout rate around participation, giving them something that they're going to keep going with, because we're finding that if you try, if they, all these businesses are getting surveyed all the time, um, what, what happens is, you know, they're getting, you know, the Chamber of Commerce surveying them and, you know, uh, ABS and all those sort of other people might be doing surveys. The quality information gets a little bit, uh, in, you know, uh, maybe compromised because they're just time poor and they're just throwing in information in there. So basically what we do is, as a whole of strategy, we come up and we've done lots of focus groups on this with them, is to work out um, to get a better in, uh, completion rates and enhance the quality of the information and the respondent value. So that basically we go on the mantra that the greater level of participation, the greater the rewards. And that's not only greater rewards to government, but it's actually greater rewards to the actual businesses that are participating uh, and what, uh, how robust the information coming back to them is. And so they're encouraged to participate and then also encouraged to recruit their, their peers to actually increase that pool uh, of, of um, data that actually gives us more uh, statistical uh, accuracy across the data. Some more success factors, they're more relevant then. Uh, if we can do more data, get more firms on, it grows that pool, as I said, uh, becomes more contextual and gives them more comfort uh, value. Uh, it may basically gives uh, more accurate information and it allows uh, businesses to, I suppose, do the first, in the creative sector anyway, do the first uh, and use the first tool that allows them to do it over a period of time. Because a lot of these guys aren't in and out businesses. They're not like a Gloria Jeans or a, or a Subway franchise, franchise, although Subway franchises are normally about 15 years long. But basically, they're not in and out. They're not fly by night. They really want to develop their organisations. They're a graphic designer or architect and things like that. This is a career for them. And they want to measure their business longitudinally over, over a period of time. Right, so this is the public unveiling of the, uh, the new dashboard. Basically what this does is, in real time, provide instantaneous feedback on how you're going. So there's these big reports that need to get sent to government, they need to they go to the CCI, they need to become uh, research and academic papers. However, business doesn't have time to wait six to eight weeks to 12 weeks to actually uh, say, you know, give me back my report. They would have forgotten by then about the survey or the, the response engine that they did. So we haven't tried to create a LinkedIn, we haven't tried to create a, 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 a Lyme survey, although we use that for our pilot, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, uh, basically what we've tried to do is a response engine based on a personal profile. So a business will go in and they actually sort of top up, if you like, their membership and their login details. So they're basically managing a personal profile with their name and their address and all the details that goes on, their, long, uh, their uh, login details, and then the memberships. Now, the memberships are very important because they form part of who, they, who, who their cluster is, if you like, within the creative industries. So Lindy uh, referred to the AIA, the Australian Institute of Architects. So in there, you'd actually put in that you're a member of that. So we can then start to report back to them about those numbers, about who's actually there. This is the, um, the response engine, if you like. So basically, this is not just a boring survey. This is dynamic. So this allows you to come in and do one question, or even half finish a question, save and pause it, come back at a later time, get your CFO to go off and run around and get some more information, get your accountant to get some stuff, um, ask people about, are we going to export to China next year? What, what, what's going on? So generally speaking, this is a, a dynamic process that doesn't sort of make them go, thou shalt fill out the survey, and they have to keep going through that, that pathway, if you like, with that completion meter on SurveyMonkey or Lime Survey or one of those sort of tools. This actually allows them to come back and forth and jump in and out of the program. They've got plenty of time to fill it out and it allows them to manage responses rather than do it like a traditional survey. 
and that of course helps completion rates. So these are some of the slides as we go through the left hand side, the, the, the user can click on very quickly, they can add um, information in. What you'll see there is, if you've done the, the benchmark, um, and this is, this is where it's called benchmarking, basically if you've done a longitudinal piece uh, in the last couple of years, your 